Hello everyone, my name is Ambassador Professor David K. Ewan. I welcome our new viewers from the United States and I continue to welcome our viewers from Asia, the Middle East, Europe and Russia and also Latin America. Welcome to this third edition of Inspire in our second season. We're excited that 2020 is starting off to be a very good year as our programming started last year and really launched into a wonderful season this year. Today we'll be talking about respect. Respect is a basic moral value or need which makes us aware that we are human beings, not wild animals. That's what separates us from animals. So we should respect others and should be respected by others to prove our humane identity among all other creatures present on this earth. We all have a need for a sense of identity. That's part of the human nature. And a key way to get this is in a way that others acknowledge us and treat us as if we are important and have a good reason to be here. It gives us a sense of purpose. When we are respected, people take us seriously, listening to us, seeking to understand. We are admired and valued. When we are taken seriously, we are accepted and esteemed. There is an external and internal set of elements to this need. Some need regular acknowledgement from other people while others have sufficient self-respect and more in, that is more internally driven. To not be taken seriously is to reduce our social status and hence our identity. When we are trivialized or ignored, we feel smaller and somehow less. As a result, we may become depressed, frustrated, or angry, and may take revenge in a subtle or very public ways. This all relates to maturity. If this affects you in a certain way, there may be less maturity. If uh, this has an impact on you, it could have more or less maturity. The opposite of respect is contempt, which is a key pr uh, predictor of divorce or breakup, for example. When one partner shows contempt, the relationship is very likely doomed. Showing contempt to anyone is a deep insult and will often make them very unhappy with you, whether they show it at the time or not. So today's agenda, this is what we're going to talk about today. What is respect? Well, it's an equation. It's a simple equation. Morals plus manners equals respect. I'll say that again. Morals plus manners equals respect. So that's going to be the foundation of our conversation today. So I'm going to talk about two things. The first one is the four kinds of authorities that deserve respect. There are four kinds of authorities that deserve respect. The other one, number two, there are five reasons to respect people around you. Okay, so I'll say that again. So there are four kinds of authorities that deserve respect. And number two, there are five reasons to respect people around you. So let's get back to what we said before. What is respect? So as I said before, it is morals plus manners equals respect. Again, morals plus manners equals respect. So morals is a person's standards of behavior or beliefs concerning what is and is not acceptable for them to do. These are the values, the principles, and the standards. Okay, I just spoke about morals. Now I will talk about manners, manners. What are manners? Manners is a person's outward bearing or way of behavior towards others. So now let's add it up. Morals plus manners equals respect. So now you know what respect is. Respect is the combination or the addition of morals and manners. So let me read two scriptures. In Romans chapter 12, verse 10. Romans chapter 12, verse 10. 
Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. So I'm going to key in on that phrase, honor one another above yourselves. So respect means it's not about you. That's what Romans chapter 12 verse 10 says. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Now I'm going to go to another scripture. First of Peter chapter 2 verse 17. First of Peter chapter 2 verse 17. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honor the emperor. So when we talk about love the family of believers, this is your Christian family. This is your church family. When we say fear God, this doesn't mean spooky, I'm afraid. Fear God means respect God with reverence. That's how the word fear is being used here. And then when we talk about honor the emperor, that is giving respect to a governing authority. So now that we've given a little bit of a summary of morals plus manners equals respect, or if you want to look at it, respect is the sum of morals and manners. I'll read those two scriptures again. Romans chapter 12, verse 10, be devoted to one another in love, honor one another above yourselves. And then in 1st of Peter chapter 2, verse 17, show proper respect to everyone, love the family of believers, fear God, honor the emperor. Okay, now I'm going to talk about the four kinds of authorities that deserve respect. There are four kinds of authorities that deserve respect. One, two, three, four. The first one is divine authority, divine authority. And that is shown in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Matthew 28, verse 18. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. That authority is delegated to three other spheres of authority on earth. Your pastors, your apostles, the teachers, the evangelists, Everyone that's involved in the fivefold ministry, that is part of what we call the divine authority. Okay, so that's in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Number two, number two, the civil authority. So in Romans chapter 13, verse 1 through 7, Paul tells us to submit to civil authorities. And this is what it is. So in 1st of Peter, um, in chapter 2, verse 13 through 14, uh, uh, submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human authority, whether to the emperor as the supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. So we talked about Romans 13, 17, where Paul tells us to submit to civil authorities and first of Peter chapter 2, verse 13, through 14 where verse 13 says submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human authority whether to the emperor as the supreme authority that's the governing authority in verse 14 or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right so those are the other participants of the governing authority so that's number two, civil authority. Number three, the church authority. Number three, the church authority. And we see that in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. And the scripture reads, have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. Do this so that their work will be joy, not a burden, for that would be of no benefit to you. 
I think that scripture, Hebrews 13, 17, is self-explanatory. So I will read it again. Have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must give account. Do this so that th their work will be a joy and not a burden for that would be of no benefit to you. And now the fourth one, the fourth one, parental authority, parental authority. And that's in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter six, verse one through three, Ephesians chapter six, verse one through three. Obey, uh, I, I'll start again. Verse one, uh, verse one, children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Verse two, honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. Verse three, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. So there, that is a promise. If you, if the children obey their parents, then the promise that goes along with it is that you may enjoy long life on earth. And that's Ephesians chapter six, verse one through three. So let me give you a summary of the four kinds of authorities that deserve respect. I've talked about divine authority. I've talked about civil authority. I've talked about church authority. And then I talked about parental authority. Now, here are five reasons to respect those around you even when you don't feel like doing so. See, that's the one thing about respecting others. You may need to do it even if you don't feel like doing it. That's important. So again, here are five reasons to respect those around you even when you don't feel like doing so. Here's the first one. And it's probably one you weren't expecting it. God expects it. That's the first reason to respect those around you even if you don't feel like doing so. God expects it. And in Romans chapter 12, verse 10, it says, outdo one another in showing honor. Outdo one another in showing honor. God expects us to honor one another with the love and grace he has shown us. But when we forget how much grace we've received, we start questioning how respectful we really need to be. We become more concerned with our own rights and privileges than God's command that we honor the people he put in our lives. We respect others because God has set the example of honor and because he expects us to do so too. So that's the first reason God expects it. The second reason is respect multiplies. That's right, respect multiplies. The beauty of doing hard things for God is the blessings that follow. When we sow respect into the lives around us, those seeds are not fruitless. Respect multiplies. When you respect someone who doesn't deserve it, you attribute value to them. Many people are so unaccustomed to being treated with honor that they return the favor. Some of the most hardened people you've met may blossom when given undeserving respect. This is the nature of grace. Give grace, give honor, and watch God work. So we just talked about that respect multiplies. Now we're going to talk about everyone is an image bearer. That's number three. Everyone is an image bearer. So let's talk about that. Think about that everyone we interact with is an immortal soul. Think about that. Think about that everyone we interact with is an immortal soul. That's an incredible thought. Everyone we meet is created in the image of God. Even the rudest cashier, the most grumpy coworker, or the most difficult parent is an image bearer. As fellow creations of God, we need to recognize the innate 
value in others, even when that honor is unrequited. Okay? So I just spoke about that everyone is an image bearer. We bear the image of God. Now I'm going to go to number four. Your respect is your testimony. At the end of the day, people don't notice whether you go to church or don't drink and swear. They don't. They remember how you made them feel. It's the aha moment. If you treat someone with honor and respect, especially when they know they didn't deserve it, that respect is your testimony. It tells them there is something different about you. You didn't seek revenge or justice. You gave them respect. You listened. That small step is a seed planted in their heart. By offering respect, you are building trust, which brings us to our final point. Number five, respect builds trust. Again, respect builds trust. You see, respect builds bridges. It brings people to a place of trust. By respecting others, you're showing them that they have value, a value that originates with God. This grace draws them to you, which grants you an opportunity to share the gospel or to provide value in someone's life, whatever it may be. Though it is difficult to respect others at times, remember that you're doing it in honor of God, not to please man. When you choose to respect, God smiles. He sees even if no one else does. It doesn't matter if anyone else does. What matters if God does? So God sees it. So let me give you the five reasons to respect those around you. Here's a summary, okay? This is a summary of the five reasons to respect people around you, all those who are around you. Number one, God expects it. Number two, respect multiplies. Number three, everyone is an image bearer. Number four, your respect is your testimony. And number five, respect builds trust. So let me give you a summary of what we've talked about today. We talked about three things. We first start, started talking about what is respect. We talked that, uh, that respect is morals plus manners. We had this equation, morals plus manners equals respect. Then what we talked about were the four kinds of authorities that deserve respect. Then we talked about the five reasons to respect people around you. So in conclusion, receiving respect from others is important because it helps us to feel safe and to express ourselves. Respect means that you accept somebody for who they are even when they're different from you and you don't agree with them. Respect in your relationships builds feelings of trust, safety, and well-being. Give respect, and you will receive it too. My name is Professor Ambassador David Ewan. I'm happy to have you join us on Inspire. Once again, we welcome our American audience on our third episode in our second season of Inspire. We'll be broadcasting more as we continue with our second season. Thank you. This is Inspire.